Marxian perspective on development. Content 7.1 Introduction, 7.2 Marxian idea of development, 7.3 Capitalism, class relations and development, 7.4 Marx plans of action, 7.5 Marx and historical sociological perspective, 7.6 New Marxian approach, world system analysis, 7.7 Implications of world system analysis, 7.8 Critical theory, Frankfurt School, 7.9 Conclusion, 7.10 Further readings. Learning objectives. This unit aim to introduce you to Marx's idea of development, Marx's idea of capitalism, class relations and development, and his plans of action, neo-Marxian approach to development, and criticism of Marxian approach to development. 7.1 Introduction This unit deals with the central Marxian idea of development. Marx has tried to explain development in terms of the progression of society through various stages, tribal, Asiatic, ancient, feudal, and capitalist. He has visualized conflict inbuilt in the material conditions of existence to be the core factor in development. To carry forward this conflict, he has identified the agency of social class as the main vehicle of class conflict. In the earlier units of this block, we have discussed modernization and liberal approaches to development. By now, you must be acquainted with the significance of market force in development. In this unit, we shall be dealing with Marxian approach to development. In MSO001 Sociological Concept and Theories, you have read Marxian concept of class and class conflict and capitalistic mode of production and change. In this unit, we touch upon all these issues again from the perspective of development. Here we shall briefly discuss Marx's idea of development, capitalism and his plan of action. The social conditions of working class in capitalistic mode of production has been especially examined. We have also discussed neo-Marxian approaches to development, that is the world system analysis and critical theory. This unit ends with discussion on critical theory. 7.2 Marxian idea of development Karl Marx on 1818-1883 was the most influential social thinker on development in the 19th and 20th century. Of late, against the backdrop of the collapse of socialist economy, Marxian thought has been a subject of critical review. Around half of the world population followed his suggestion path of restructuring the social and economic organizations and economic development. His contribution to the theory of development is simply unparalleled and path-breaking. After his death on 14th March 1883, his lifetime collaborator and close friend Friedrich Engels wrote in his obituary. Just as Darwin discovered the law of development or organic nature, so Marx discovered the law of development of human society. The simple fact hitherto concealed by an overgrowth of ideology that mankind must first of all eat, drink, have shelter and clothing before it can pursue politics, science, art, religion, etc. That therefore the production of the immediate material means and consequently the agree of economic development attained by a given people or during a given epoch from the foundation upon which the state institutions, the legal conceptions, art and even the ideas on religion of the people concerned have been evolved and in the light of which they must therefore be explained instead of vice versa as had hitherto been the case. The development of human society through various stages, development and changes in the material condition, existence, development of capitalism and the corresponding change in the class relationship and transformation in the mode of production were the major concerns of Karl Marx. Let us examine some of these concerns. A. Production, Relation and Development Marx's profound philosophical vision of the development of human society which may be understood in terms of material conditions of existence and the dialectic, that is contradiction inbuilt in the material condition of existence. Though he has not denied the significance of non-material forces in the process of development of human society through various stages, he emphasized that material forces and their contradiction provide the very basic and fundamental condition of development and change in human society. Marx's idea of development is best understood in terms of his analysis and interpretation of the capitalistic society, its evolution, structure and functioning. As a prolific writer, Karl Marx has touched upon all these issues in several of his writings, especially in the Communist Manifesto, in the preface to a contribution to the critique of political economy and the capital. According to Karl Marx, all the legal relations 
politics, forms of states, etc., are to be understood not in terms of development of human mind, but in terms of the material conditions of life. To him, in the process of developing of human society, human being has emerged to be a producing animal and thereby tied with several production relations to court him. In the social production of their life, men enter into definite relations that are indispensable and independent of their will, relations of productions which correspond to a definite stage of development of their material productive forces. The sum total of these relations of production constitutes the economic structure of society, the real foundation on which rises a legal and political superstructure and to which correspond definite forms of social consciousness. The mode of production of material life conditions the social, political and intellectual life process in general. He was very categorical to mention that with the change in the economic foundation, the inter superstructure that is the legal, political, religious, aesthetic or philosophical get transferred. In the process of such transformation, individual consciousness is determined not only by what he thinks but by the contradiction of material life that is the conflict between the social productive forces and relation of production. Consciousness is a part of development in human society. To him, it is not the consciousness of men that determines their existence, but on the contrary, their material condition of existence that determines their consciousness. As pointed out earlier, antagonistic production relation is the key factor for change and development to Karl Marx. He points out that at a certain stage of development, the material productive forces come in conflict with the existing relationship relation of production with the property relation within which they have been at work hitherto. From forms of development of productive forces, their relationship turn into their fetters, then begin to epoch of revolution. To him, the Asiatic ancient, feudal and capitalistic are the progressive epochs in the economic formation of society. The capitalist relation of production to him is the last antagonistic form of social process of production. b. Class relation and change. In all the stages of economic transformation of society, there have been specific form of class struggles. Social classes according to Karl Marx are the main agents of social change. The change is however based on class conflict. Thus to him, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. Free man and slave, patriation and plebeian, lord and serf, guide master and journeyman, in a word, oppressor and oppressed, stood in constant opposition to one another carried on an uninterpreted, not now hidden, now open fight, a fight that each time ended either in a revolutionary reconstruction of society at large or in the common ruin of the contending classes. Classes to Marx are formed based on the objective of material conditions. These are groups of people with a common economic position, vice versa those of other class. In essence, this economic interest is conflicting and contradictory to each other's class position. These class relations get transformed to hostile action against each other with the intermediation of class consciousness. The objective material condition form the basics for the formation of class in itself, which get transformed into class for itself in the process of transversing of subjective class consciousness. To Karl Marx, though the class relations was very complicated in the earlier epochs of history, in the modern stages of capitalism, this has been simplified. In the modern capitalistic society, new classes, however, have emerged with new condition of operations and new form of struggle between the bourgeois, the owner of the production, that is the haves, and the proletariat, that is the not-haves, the have-nots. According to Marx, modern capital wage laborers are paupers who grow more rapidly than the 
population of and wealth the essential condition both the existence and sway of bourgeois class is the formation and augmentation of capital the advance of history whose involuntary promoter is the bourgeoisie replaces the in isolation of the labor due to competition by their revolutionary competition due to association the development of modern industry therefore cuts from under its feet the very foundation on which the bourgeois produces and appropriate products what the bourgeois therefore produces above all is its grave diggers it fall and the victory of the proletariat are equally inevitable 7.3 capitalism class relations and development modern industry has established the world market that has given immense scope of development to commerce navigation and communication by land this development again have paved the way for the extension of industries and free trade the bourgeois class constantly maximize its profit through the expansion of new markets introduction of new technology extraction of surplus value and exploitation of proletariat however along with these developments there emerge new forces of contradiction within the capitalist system notwithstanding the emergence of new forces of contradiction the bourgeois was very revolutionary in their outlook and action according to marx the bourgeois historically has played a most revolutionary part the bourgeois cannot exist without constantly revolutionizing the instruments of production and thereby the relations of production and with them the old relations of society through the exploitation of the world market the bourgeois has given a cosmopolitan character to the production and consumption process the old industries got destroyed the old national industries got dislodged the industry in the capitalistic system no longer worked only on indigenous raw materials but raw materials drawn from the remotest zones whose products are consumed in every quarter of the globe in place of old wants satisfied by the production of the country we find new wants requiring for their satisfaction the products of distant lands and climes in the place of the old local and national selu- seclusion and self sufficiency we have intercourse in every direction universal interdependence of nations and as in material so also in intellectual production the intellectual creations of individual nations become common property national one sidedness and narrow mindedness become more and more impossible and from the numerous national and local literatures there arises a world literature the capitalist according to marx also subjected to the nature to the force of man and machinery through the application of chemistry to industry and agriculture and modern technologies such as stream navigation railways electric telegraph canal canalization of rivers etc all this facilitated the scope of free commodification of the economy at world scales there also emerged free competition accompanied by social and political institutions to adopt to it the modern capitalist however according to marx has inherited and nurtured the seeds of its destruction in its own womb in proportion to the growth of the bourgeois there has been there has emerged the modern world working class the proletariat these laborers who must sell themselves piecemeal are a commodity like every other article of course commerce and are consequently exposed to all the vicissitudes of competition to all the fluctuations of the market for marx the essence of the capital is to maximize profit through commodity commoditization of the production process as long as capitalism is based on private ownership of the means of production it maximizes profit of the private producers this profit is again maximized by exchange of exchange proceeding from money to money by the by way of commodity gradually the proceed from money to money by the way of commodity ends up with the more money than one had at the outset 
To explain the sources of profit, Marx talked about the theory of value, wage and surplus value. To him, the value of any commodity is roughly proportional to the quality of human labor contained in it. The wage capitalists pay to the workers as the compensation for the labor power. The worker rent to the capitalist is equal to the amount of necessary for the existence of the workers and their family to produce the merchandise for the capitalist. Under the capitalist system, worker receives the wage which is less than the actual duration of the work that is then that is less than the value of the commodity he or she produces. Here comes the notion of surplus value, which refers to the quality of value produced by the workers beyond the necessary labor time. Under the capitalist system, the workers do not get the wage for the quality of the value produced beyond the necessary labor time. In return, the wage received by a workman is restricted only to the means of his subsistence and survival. Marx calculated that the price of a commodity and therefore all of the labor is equal to its cost of production. In proportion, therefore, as the repulsiveness of, the, of work increases, the wage decreases. With the increase in the proportion of the use of machinery and division of labor, the burden of toil of the labor also increases in terms of increase in the working hours and increase in the quantum of work. Proletariat is without property. His relation to his children and wife has no longer anything in common with the bourgeois family relations. Modern industrial labor, modern subjugation to capital, the same in England as in France, in America and Germany has stripped him of every trace of national character. Law, morality, religion are to him so many bourgeois prejudices, behind which lurk in ambush just as many bourgeois interests. Gradually, the number of proletariat also increases to gain more strength and awareness. The lower middle class, the smaller manufacturer, artisans, peasants all join the army of the proletariat in their fight against the bourgeois. To Marx, all previous historical movements were movements of minorities or in the interest of minorities. The proletarian movement is the self-conscious independent movement of the immense majority in the interest of the immense majority. And again Marx writes in depicting the most general phases of the development of the proletariat, trade, we traced the more or less veiled civil war ranging within every existing society up to the point where that war breaks out into open revolution and where the violent overthrow of the bourgeois lays the foundation for the sway of the proletariat. 7.4 Marx Plan of Action After revolution by the cl working class, the proletariat would be raised to the position of ruling class to win the battle of democracy, to centralize all instruments of production in the hand of the state, to increase the total productive forces as rapidly as possible, to entirely revolutionize the mode of production. He suggested the following measures. 1. Abolition of private property in land and application of all rents of lands to public purpose, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax, abolition of all rights of inheritance, confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels, centralization of credit in the hands of state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly, centralization of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state, Extensions of factories and instruments of production owned by the state, the bringing into cultivation of wasteland and the improvement of soil generally in accordance with a common plan. Equal labor liability of all to labor, establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. Combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries, gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equal distribution of the population over the country. Free education for all children in public school, abolition of children's factory labor in its present form, combination of education with industrial production. Reflections and Action 7.1 What are the major features of capitalism according to Marx? 
செவன் பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ் மார்க்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் சோசியாலஜிக்கல் பர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ் ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் அனாலிசிஸ் கேன் டெவலப் ஏ கிரிட்டிக்கல் அப்ரோச் டு த ஸ்டடி ஆஃப் த பாஸ்ட் ப்ரெசென்ட் அண்ட் ஃபியூச்சர் இட் கேன் இல்யூமினேட் த வெரைட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் கல்ச்சரல் அண்ட் சோஷியல் டைவர்சிட்டி தட் ஹவ் எக்ஸிஸ்டட் அண்ட் ஷோ ஹவ் சேஞ்சஸ் இன் திஸ் ஹவ் ஒக்கர்ட் மெனி ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் அப்ரோச்சஸ் இன் சோசியாலஜி ஹவ் அசியூம்ட் தட் ஹிஸ்டரி இஸ் அசோசியேட்டட் வித் ஹியூமன் ப்ராக்ரெஸ் அண்ட் ரீச்சிங் ஹையர் ஸ்டேஜஸ் ஆஃப் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் சொசைட்டி Marxian theories and liberal theories of modernization generally adopt this approach but historical approaches to sociology need not make this assumption and can consider human experience to have many forms of diversity society to have made great progress in some areas and little in others and to consider the possibility of regression rather than progression it would be best to adopt a historical approach that does not consider human history to have a particular direction or to necessarily evolve to more progressive forms of social organization further there may be no inevitability or purpose to historical change change certainly occurs but is a product of myriad influences some intended and other unintended with coincidence and chance along with intersection of various unforeseen social circumstances and forces there are certainly social forces leading in a specific directions markets exchange and powerful individuals and groups attempting to further their influence and power but people in the social world can also change these social forces for example some contemporary analysis assumes that globalization standardization and the decline of national states are dominant forces that have a certain inevitability while there is no doubt that these forces are strong there are other aspects such as traditional cultures resistance to change local grounding and communication and discussion as highlighted by habermas and others that must be considered as well writers in the 19th century often adopted a view that human history passed through various indefinable changes the sociology of comte with focus of the theological metaphysical scientific stage of society and the analysis of enlightenment writers tended to assume that human history has gone through various stages of development with each of the stages at a higher level than earlier stages the enlightenment thinkers assumed that the stage that had been reached at the time they were think- writing was an advance over earlier stages in that humans had developed a better understanding of the world and could now improve the social world the view that the stages of historical rep- history represented progress is reflected in concepts such as primitive and backward to refer to traditional forms and civilizations and modern to refer to european societies of the 19th century marx and angels and later writers in the marxian stream have generally adopted a similar view and developed a historical analysis as a major part of their analysis for marx the mode of productions were historical in nature with each representing a particular stage of historical evolution and containing forces of change but also being limited in form thus markets and cities emerged in feudal society but the power of this emergent so- social forces required change in the mode of production as a result the forces of the bourgeois and capitalism broke the power of feudal forms of social and economic organization creating a new society in the 19th century for marx each mode of production is historically in nature having emerged at a particular time but also having an a historical dynamic built into it marxian analysis is thus essentially historical in content and form while it is theoretical the concept and modes models of marxian analysis were are simultaneously historical and theoretical there had been several criticism against this marxian model of development let us look into some of them here marx has forecasted the disappearance of the state after the successful implementation of the program of action by the dictatorship of the proletariat however historical experience shows that the state system has not only got reinforced it has at times taken an oppressive form against it is a fact that centralized planning can't be implemented without well organized state mechanism that marx idea of state withering where remains in essence contradictory to both in terms of historical experience and execution of centralized planning it is assumed that the dictatorships of the proletariat would reassure in an era classless society however after the seizure of state power not the proletariat but the political elites occupy the power 
ownership of power is an important dimension of defining social class indeed here new political classes emerge with a few occupying the power position while the vast majority being the powerless marx had generalized the idea related to class formation and class transformation and the role of the economic structure in determining the course of history marx has defined social collectiveness or groups in terms of economy here class has been seen as the sole agent to bring change in society through revolution however the significance of nationality ethnicity race gender caste state etc within this collective are grossly ignored indeed marx has defined all social relations and conflicts in terms of class relations and conflicts by ignoring the social and historical roles played by these collectives in various societies the marxian idea of capitalism has not taken into cognizance the advancement of new technological inputs and new employer employee relationship in the changing world many of the aspects are covered in the theory of modernization and the critical theory the process of advancement to capitalism may also follow the path of rationalization of religious thoughts as depicted in the protestant ethics highlighted by marx weber reflections and action 7.2 write a critic of the marx perspective and development karl marx core idea of development was further by several schools of marxian approach in the following section we shall be presenting a glimpse of neo marxian approach 7.6 neo marxian approach world systems analysis one of the primary historical social or sociological perspectives is that of the world system analysis a neo marxian approach built around analysis of modes of production this approach developed from an analysis of the economic and material world specifically capitalism as it emerged and developed in europe beginning in the 1500s the all uh, the world systems analysis generally argues that this new economic and social system broke the power of earlier political and economic empires and systems and developed towards a dominant world system while originating in europe the world system that has emerged over the last 500 years is without limits and extends for its reach throughout the globe in contrast to some marxian approaches this world system is not It always progressive in its effects it encompasses a variety of modes of production and could ultimately be replaced by a socialist world system the world system analysis was developed by manuel wallerstein who has been a professor of columbia university mcgill university and currently the state university of new york and binghamton wallerstein is best known for his the modern world system published in 1974 in this book he had he analyzes the or, or origins of the modern system beginning around 1500 where there began a shift from political and military forms of dominance to economic influences and power in later volumes wallstein traces the development of this new system showing how it is creating core periphery and semi periphery regions of the world while political structures are connected to economic ones wallstein argues that a variety of political structures are compatible with the capitalist world system the world system theory abandons national economics and the nation state as the unit of analysis marxian theory generally works within the framework of national social structures with a capitalist and a working class being rooted in the organization of production and distribution on a national scale The world system theory considers the division of labor, exploitation and equality on a world rather than a national level. That is capitalism is not just organized on a national level, it develops and uses resources, labor, production and markets on a world scale. The development of Canada would easily be interpreted within a world systems approach. European expansion led to the development of Atlantic fisheries to supply food for Europe. later the development of fur trade made canada supply first for european consumptions these are connected to the development of industry and consumers markets in europe with an emerging bourgeois and working class the development of trade and european expansion across north america destroyed many of the aboriginal economies that existed earlier agricultural and industrial changes in europe led to the export of dispos and poor european to settle in north america forest mining and agriculture products were exported to europe 
thereby assisting in the growth of European and North American capitalism. While some areas benefited, others became disadvantages as a result of this development. Social and class structures have a connection to this international division of labor and the forms of development of production and markets on a world scale. In world system analysis, there are three types of regions. The core areas of the world systems are the wealthy countries of Europe and North America that dominate and exploit much of the rest of the world. These countries tend to have relatively free labor markets with relatively well-paid skilled workers. In contrast, the periphery is poor and exploited, expo exporting raw materials to the core economies. Conditions for workers in periphery tend to be very poor and workers in these countries are often coerced through slavery or threat of starvation. The core countries benefit by maintaining the peripheral countries in a backward state. Semi-peripheral countries combine aspects of the core and periphery being exploited and exploiting. Examples might include some of the poorer parts of Europe, Portugal or Greece or some of the better of South American countries such as Argentina. They key to the division, however, is not so much the countries but, but the position uh, any area occupies within the international division of labor. For example, there may be peripheral areas of core countries, some parts of uh, northern Saskatchewan or Maritimes and core areas in primarily peripheral countries. 7.5 Implication of World System Analysis In terms of sociological analysis, there appears to be at least three implications of the world system analysis. A. Expansion Unlike earlier emperors which had limited to expansion prescribed by the ability to politically govern a wide area, there appears to be a little limit to the capitalist world system, especially today. It has expanded over the last 500 years and shows no signs of ending the domination of the world economy. Wallerstein argues that this is one difference of the current world system for earlier ones. There was a decisive break around the period 1500, whereby capitalism, technology and science combined to create an expansive and global system. International Scope Social structure has an international basis. Any analysis of the social structure must consider the international aspect of this. That is, the particular place any group occupies in an international division of labor may be more important than the seeming place within the national economy and society. See, difference and inequality. In contrast to theories of modernization or globalization that argues that there may be a single, more uniform world in the future, the thrust of world systems anal analysis is that the continued inequalities and backwardness are furthered at the same time that wealth and progress occur in the core. This world system does not require similar culture, politics, or even modes of production in different regions. Rather, the capitalist world system can accommodate many different political forms, democracy, totalitarianism, monarchy, military rule, and different forms of production, slavery, semi-feudal forms of larger states, and improvised presence, market-oriented agriculture. While the economic power of capitalism makes its effect felt on a worldwide scale, this system creates wealth in some places and takes wealth away from others. As a result, poverty and inequality are essential aspects of such a system. This creates strains and can lead to redistributions of power and wealth on a worldwide scale. Study of Change The world system analysis provides a useful way of examining changes that have occurred and continue to occur across the globe. For example, the migration of a large number of people from poor to richer countries is a result of the development on the world system. Destroying traditional ways of life and livelihood in the sending countries and filling labor supply needs in receiving countries. At the same time, this approach may be overly economist in such a in much the same manner as much Marxian analysis. That is World systems analyze, analyze, analysis. The world system analysis does not pay much attention to culture and does not appear to consider it as an independent aspect. Further, the assumption of dominance of European and North American capitalist forces 
may be somewhat ethnocentric reflections and action 7.3 what is the essence of the world system theory how is it significant in exploring development in contemporary society 7.8 critical theory frankfurt school critical theory has a different meaning for different writers ex critic it is usually considered to be a critic of modernity and the development and the institution associated with modern society it can also be a critic of particular schools of thought within sociology or of sociology and social science as a whole a large part of critical theory has been so critic art and culture in particular the consumer culture advertising the media and other forms of popular culture some of the arguments in giddens dilemmas of the self such as the evaporated self and commodified experience are very similar to critical theory in fact it is in the sphere of culture that critical theory continues to be relevant and innovative marxism is one form of critical theory since marxism from provide secretic capital and modernism the marxism of many communist parties and established socialist societies is generally not regarded as critical theory it is rather marxist theory that attempt to show the shortcomings of existing society and institutions that are considered critical theories kellner notes critical theory has been deeply concerned with the fate of modernity and has offered systematic and comprehensive theories of the trajectory of modernity combined with critical diagnosis of some of the latest limitations pathologies and destructive effects while providing defenses of some of its progressive elements in kellner's view critical theory has generally been committed to the idea of modernity and progress while at the same time noting the ways that features of modernity can create problems for individuals and society critical theory is usually more closely associated with a group of theorists called the frankfurt school it was it were german marxist theorists such as benjamin hokema adorn from marcus and more recently habermas and ofe who usually identified as establishing and developing a critical theory of modern society others such as hungarian marxist lukas and some contemporary north americans most notably colhorn and keller are also considered to be critical theorists it will be primarily this tradition that will be examined in this section book 7.1 postmodern versus critical theory note that critical theory differs from postmodern approaches to social theory theorist in the later perspective tends to argue that modernity has ended or that modernity must be rejected in its totality postmodernist may even reject social theory and political pr- pr- practice whereas critical theorist tends to be tend to theorize extensively and some argue that politics can be used to pursue progress critical theorist generally tends to have a comprehensive and overall social theory and an idea of progress and a better world even if they are unable to find a way ways getting there in contrast a postmodern approach is more likely to be associated with the rejection of comprehensive universal theory a history backward when critical theory is mentioned in connection with social uh, theory it is usually associated with what is called the frankfurt school the institute has begun in 1923 with a financial endowment from a wealthy german grain merchant and was attached to frankfurt university in germany german universities had been quite conservative but with the political turmoil following world war 1 new ideas developed and were influential within the universities for a time many marxists thought that the germany that germany would become socialist following the russian revolution when this provoked unlikely to occur some of the intellectuals attracted to marxism argued that marxist oriented research was necessary to reexamine marxist theory in the light of the changes that had occurred in europe in particular some of these marxists considered that while the objective condition for socialism existed the subjective consciousness of workers was not conductive to overthrow capitalism and creating socialism in particular revolutionary consciousness cultures and organization and a clear notion of socialism seemed to be lacking 
As a result, it was necessary to reconsider various aspects of Marxism and focus on consciousness, subjectivity, culture, ideology and the concept of socialism in order to make possible radical political change. The institute began its work in Germany and continued through 1933 when the Nazis came to power. Most of those who were members of the institute went to the United States at that time with some like Marcus staying there uh, while others returned to Germany after World War II. The institute was established in New York City and became affiliated with Columbia University and it was there that the term critical theory became associated with the institute. After World War II, the institute was re-established in Germany and, the, and continues to operate there. Following the death of Hockmeyer and Adorno, Jürgen Habermas became the leading critical theorist, a position he continues to hold. The period of a few major critical theorists, Walter Benjamin 1890-1940, Max Hockmeyer 1895-1973, Theodore Adorno 1903-1969, Enrich Fromm 1900-1980, Herbert Marcu 1898-1979, Jürgen Habermas 1929 onwards. So let us now look at the features of Frankfurt School and how it can put as an extension of Marxist thought. B. Materialism and Idealism Critical theory is thus primarily a European social theory influenced by the German tradition of Marx and Weber and by the experience of fascism but also by the changing aspect of modern capitalism. Critical theory began by putting Marxian political economy at the center of analysis and thus the early critical theory was materialist and committed to socialism. One of the major features of this perspective was that all the social life is a reflection of the economic system and the role of social theory was to investigate the ways in which this changed and affected people. Rather, critical theory describes the complex sets of mediations that incorrect in the interconnect consciousness and society, culture and economy, state and citizens. Critical theory thus developed an approach which incorporated both economic and material and analysis of individuals and their social psychology, attempting to deal with aspects of what we might refer to as agency structure issues today. But neither the material nor consciousness was primary determining the other. Rather, this theorist paid much attention to culture, ethics, fashion, public opinion, sports, lifestyle and leisure. Topics which had not previously been incorporated into Marxian analysis Colhan noted how Marx shared with the young Hegel an attempt to conceptualize the absolute creativity of the human being through the example of art, but unlike Hegel, he extended this into more general analysis of labor. The Frankfurt School theorists took up this challenge once again and made art and aesthetics a central feature of their analysis. Superdependency Critical theorists are critical of Marxism when it is mechanically materialist or too determinist. They were especially critical of branches of philosophy, especially positivism and scientific methods associated with it. They are also critical of sociology and other social sciences for being influence critical and having only partial analysis. They thus set very high standard of social science What's that they themselves are ultimately unable to meet? Given that the initial concerns of this theorist was to understand the reason why class consciousness had not developed among the class working class, their first project was to conduct an empirical study of the white collar working class in Germany to determine information concerning their psychological, social and political attitudes and combine these with theoretical ideas from the various social sciences. The findings of this study were that the actual revolutionary potential of the German working class was less than what usually assumed and that while the workers might resist a fascist attempt to take over the government, it was unlikely that they would undertake the sacrifices necessary for a socialist revolution. While this approach providing, provided interesting result, it is not clear that in studies of this type, 
the approach of this critical theorist differed all that much from some of the conventional social science approaches the commodity exchange beginning with the commodity and uh, commodity production as the key features of capitalist society they argued that the capitalist market relations and the values were pertaining penetrating ever more areas of life exchange was becoming the primary way in which people related to and interacted with each other in a capitalist market society consequently reification the turning of humans cultures natures and everything else into a commodities whose fundamental substance was exchange value came to dominate relationships and activity within the capitalist society that is rather than human relationships better uh, between individuals exchange relationships come to dominate interpersonal relationships marx had noted that this but this line of thought was much further developed by the critical theorist they looked on capitalism in the 20th century as extending this to many aspect of society previously untouched or relatively unaffected by exchange relations they saw aspects of personal life such as love friendship and the family being reduced to such form of exchange conception became organized by which by such forces as well so that there were increasingly oppressive unif- uniformities and identities the concerns was uh, with the rising sameness and conformity in society that did not let underlying tensions and contradictions to surface and be amenable to public attentions and action they viewed such forces as stifling individuality and particularity and producing a certain sameness among all members of society this aspect of capitalism has developed much more than in ni- in the 1920 and 30s so that this part of their critic certainty has an important resonance in today's economy media and society consumer and media capitalism have vastly extended their reach into all aspects of consumer society and life in general and an critical approach to contemporary society can benefit from and use the ideas developed by this critical theorists e administered society a major feature of political sociology of critical theory is the notion of an administered society weber had argued that the forces of rationality and the rationalizations were becoming increasingly dominant in western society rather than a traditional or a charismatic forces being dominant in social organization weber argued that calculation accounting considered decision making and guided social action by careful examination of how means could be used to accomplish particular ends were forms that had become more forceful in western society these forces are clearest in economics business and formal organization but weber argued that these same forces made their effects felt in politics education and even arts critical theorist added these ideas of weber on bureaucracy rationalization administration to the marxian ideas of exchange and commodification while marx was primarily concerned with the economic sphere and the critical theorists extended their analysis to the political and social sphere combining the ideas of exchange and administered society the result was a, was a view that capitalism and the social society associated with was totalizing system which attempted to penetrate every area of life from self constitutions to interpersonal relations to education this totalizing process were leading to the destruction of individuality and particularity one from this book was an economic analysis which argued that capitalism had been transformed from uncontrolled and relatively free markets to a form of state capitalism while marx and the, some earlier economists may have foreseen some aspects of this they did not foresee the manner in which the state would intervene in the economic sphere Frederick Pollock one of the economists associated with Frankfurt school developed a model of state capitalism whereby the state acquires power over money and credit and regularities production and and regulates production and prices furthermore management becomes a separate for, from from ownership while this critical theorist may have overestimated the role of the state in economics 
and under, under, underestimated the vibrancy of capitalism as an economic system. Theories of this sort have contributed to our understanding of capitalism and how it evolves. There is a strong political aspect to the economic sphere and many aspects of the economy are administered. F. Totalizing societies. An important part of critical theory is related to their critique of totality and totalizing forces. They were always opposed to any form of totalitarianism, where it was a totalitarian society or fascism in Germany or the totalizing force form of administered socialism in Soviet Union. These arguments here make sense given the system that emerged in Nazi Germany and in the Soviet Union were the structures to control more and more aspects of life were established and acquired greater power. The totalitarian here would mean any system which attempts to govern many or all aspects of social life. Since the critical theorists came from were living in and were affected by the fascist form of political and social organization, it is no surprise that they developed a model of this totalitarian system. Their intimate knowledge of this system and their later observation of it from exile in the United States, each provided them with the useful insights concerning the nature of the totality. Critical theorists looked on fascism as a new form of monopoly or state capitalism, whereby the state assumed functions previously carried out by a market economy and thus behave, became the primary arbitrator of socio-economic development. They looked on this system as a result of political and economic disorder, a system that capitalism developed to survive in the face of challenges from the working class and its sovereign inability to govern itself. This was then a new phase of capitalism, a new synthesis of monopoly capitalism and the totalitarian state which threats, threatens to dominate the world and to eliminate its opponents and all vestiges of the earlier forms of liberal economy and politics. Attractive as this analysis was, this prediction turned out to be incorrect and capitalism has taken a different form, perhaps totalizing, but in a different manner. However, the experience of the critical theorist with fascism and totalitarianism helped shape their uh, later analysis. In particular, they focus on the way such as political economic system achieves a rational, efficient form of production but eliminates alternatives and debates over them. The reading from Marcus will show how he interpreted and developed these ideas of totality and administrated society as applying to societies that are normally considered more democratic and liberal. An additional aspect of the discussion in the relative autonomy of the political and the economic spheres, Marcus tend to argue that the state and the political force operate in the interest of the owners of, the, of capital some of the arguments of critical theorists question this, pointing out that the political sphere sometimes was dominant and the interest of the administered totalitarian society might dominate the economic in some aspect. Another aspect of the analysis such a system was the socio-psychological analysis of the cultural roots of fascism in attitudes towards the family and authority. For Marcus, this was new direction for social analysis to take an enriched form. One of the key critical theorists incorporated Freudian and other psychoanalytic theories into the social theory of Frankfurt School, g. individual and human nature. From the Frankfurt theories, human nature was uh, related to the historical conditions in which it emerged. Human beings are creative, but their creativity gets dominated by certain conditions under capitalism that appears to be natural and immutable. The critical theorist argued with the model of the absolute individual consciousness and identify that characterized the era of enlightenment and liberal thought gave legitimate place to individuals, subjectivity and their relationships with others. In addition to identity, non-identity and multiple involvements of the individual mean that the self-identity took many different forms. It was in this that the individual can develop creativity and reach beyond an unchanging individual identity. If society allowed the individual to explore and critique different ideas and situations, this would allow the individual to be free, 
but more and more the increased sameness and uniformity of society is forced on individuals and prevents this freedom from occurring. Colhan notes that critical theorists look on essential human characteristic as crucial for the pursuit of happiness, the need for solidarity with others and the natural sympathies. sympathies. These, of course, were developed in particular ways in each specific form of social organization since people are products of historical conditions in which they live. But they, cannot, they connect a critical form of tradition to this, with Homke arguing that a form of reason implicitly critical or civilization in part of human nature. The problem is that administered and totalizing societies attempt to stifle and constrain this and channel it in a particular direction. Erich Fromm argued that there is an essential human nature that is rep repressed and destroyed by capitalist pattern of modernization, domination. Erich Fromm's contribution to critical theory involved an analysis of individual, the family, sexual repression, the economy and the social context of the individual. His writing outlined one way in which the work of Freud and Marx can be integrated. Form argues that there are basic instincts of motive forces for human behavior, but that these are adapted both actively and positively to soci social reality. From Form, psychoanalysis seeks to discover the hidden source of the obviously irrational behavior of pattern in societal life, in religion, custom, politics, and education. In this way, he combined social psychological approaches with the main materialism of Marx that is synthesizing the in instinctual psychological forces in humans with the effects of economic and material forces on human life. From form the nuclear family as it exists in capital society is likely to understanding the connections between this, that is, the individual is raised in a family and the family stamps a specific part of the social structure on the child. This is the manner in which the society reproduces its caste structure and the imposes its ideologies and practices on individuals. While the individuals growing up in a different society would develop differently, differently the particular effects of the modernity creates forms of domination and inner struggles in each individual. Forms of social behavior such as submissiveness and powerlessness became part of the self in these circumstances. In contrast to Marxian theories, critical theorists made analysis of art and culture a central focus of their studies and noted developments in culture that were not purely economic in origin. Rather, the dialectic of enlightenment was used as critic of culture. Kellen notes that they argued culture once, once a refuge refu of beauty and truth was falling prey they believed two tendencies towards rationalization, standardization and conformity which they saw as a consequences of the trump of instrumental rationality that was coming to pervade and structure ever more aspects of life. Thus while culture once cultivated individuality, it was now promoting conformity and was a crucial part of the totally administrated society that was producing the end of the individual. From the most part, critical theorists developed critics of mass or popular culture. For example, Adorno criticized popular music production for its commodification, rationalization, fetishism, and reification of musical materials. In particular, Adorno attacked jazz as being standardized and commercialized, arguing that seemingly spontaneity and improvisations are themselves calculated in advance and the range of what is permissible is as circumscribed as it in clothes or other limbs of fashion. While uh, Adorno's critique has some uh, truth to it, he is unable to explain innovation and new development using this one-side approach. Adorno tended to look on traditional forms of high culture such as art or art galleries or music of German composers as more authentic and creative than were forms of popular culture. In my view, Adorno adopted a very elite, elitist approach to culture, one that would lead to limiting accessibility to and understanding of culture by large parts of the population. 
Walter Benjamin, one of the individual associated with the institute, disregard, disagreed with Adorno and argued that there were not such dramatic differences between high culture and popular culture. Benjamin was interested in the copy and the mechanical reproduction and artistic images, a relatively new development in the early part of the 20th century. While Benjamin regarded as the copy as questioning the authority, the authenticity of the original work of art and the aura and all aesthetics quality of the work of art, he also argued that for the first time in world history, mechanical reproduction emancipates the work of art from its parasitical dependence of ritual. Thus, an ever greater degree of the work of art reproduced becomes the work of art designed for reproducibility. Benjamin considered this to be progressive features of this new development with the new forms becoming more accessible to more people, becoming more politicized and possibly leading the situation where many images could be brought to the masses could rise political consciousness. This was particularly the case with film where Benjamin is somewhat reminiscent of Simmel. Reflections and Action 7.3 Explain the major contribution of critical theory in evaluating Marxian perspective and development. 7.9 Conclusion This unit has dealt with the central Marxian idea of development. Marx has tried to explain development in terms of progression of society from various stages that is tribal, Asiatic, ancient, feudal, capitalist, he was visualized conflict in brittle in the material conditions of existence to be the core factor in development. To carry forward this conflict, he has identified the agency of social class as the main vehicle of class conflict. In this unit, we have explained all this aspect of development as formulated by Karl Marx, the Maxian plans of actions and thought, the limitations of his scheme of thought are discussed in this unit. We have also discussed new Marxian approaches to development with special reference to dependency theory and critical theory on Marx some after Marx. 7.10 Further reading. There is many books are there. Walter Benjamin, The Works of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. Emma's Critical Theory of Societies. Then reading in Social Theory, The Classical Tradition to Postmodernism. Another one is Critical Theory, Marxism and Modernity. Another one is Critical Theory and the Crisis of Social Theory. And one is Media Culture, Cultural Studies, Identity and Political between the Modern and the Postmodern. So this is the end of the Unit 7 on Sociology of Development. Thank you very much.